All right, welcome back. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920 and MMAFightCorner.com. Lucky enough right now to be joined by the main event tonight on Lion Fights number nine, going for the very first ever Lion Fight light heavyweight title. Simon Marcus, thank you for joining us. Oh, we're, we're, we're very, very excited about this. This is a fight with you and Artem Levin that is, we talked about as possibly, it's taken about five tries to get this. Yeah, is the fifth close, time? Close to five. Close now, to five like so when the fight was signed and you were approached by it, were you kind of like, dude, that's not going to happen? We've tried this already. No, actually, I, I really had uh, confidence that Lion Fight would make it happen. Uh, in the past, it was like some different promoters I wasn't so familiar with, but I know uh, the promoters here, they're serious about business, so... Yeah, that's a, another, you know, you, you've only been fighting for a few years, right? 2007, 8? Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and by the way, congratulations on, on a remarkable career so far. Undefeated, doing doing your thing. I mean, you uh, were in a very, very highly publicized feud with Joe Schilling. And I don't know, Brian, I don't know if you know about this, but the, the two of these guys fought. And, uh, you know, Joe had said, was it Joe who said, put your money where your mouth is? Oh, oh you said it. So basically, these two guys fought for the purse. Right. Whoever won, winner, winner, winner takes all. Winner takes all, loser gets a dollar. Yep. Now you walked away a happy man that night. Sure do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the last time you were here, you were kind of, uh, you were the villain. Yeah, you, you, you were the villain walking out, but as the, as the night progressed, you kind of got a, you, you turned the crowd a little bit. A little what are you expecting tonight? supporters out here. I know also that uh, Artem Levin might have quite a few supporters too, so I don't really concentrate on that so much. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it was, uh, you seemed to relish it. You were welcome at all. Yeah, and they absolutely. were booing. You were like, come on, I, I've heard worse, right? Yeah. Well, on the plus side with tonight and fighting for Lion Fights, you only have to fight one time. For those of you that don't know uh, Simon out there, your last fight was in China right. and you had to fight twice tonight and that's something you've done kind of a couple times twice. throughout your career. Twice. Yeah. yeah. Is that tough? Uh, it's it's definitely challenging trying to concentrate on the first fight when you know you have a second fight coming up right away. So on the first fight, you're trying to reserve energy, and sometimes it can be a little bit distracting. But it's a challenge that I embrace as a fighter and uh, as an individual. Now earlier, you mentioned when I brought up the fact that you know how confident you were in the fight being actually coming to fruition. And, and you said no because uh, of the the people behind Lion Fight. Right. Okay, and I'm sure in your short but many fight career, you've had to deal with some, as Brian says, jank promoters. Yeah. Some guys that are real, you know, douchebags or just really not out for them, really out for themselves instead of the fighter. Absolutely. You get a completely different feeling here, don't you? Absolutely. Um, I feel when I come to Vegas and I fight for Lion Fight, uh, the playing grounds even. There's no favors. They put two great fighters up together, and the best man shall win. And a lot of other promotions, they have uh, they have their own agendas or whatever the case may be. But uh, I, I, I have confidence in, in me coming here twice, fighting with uh, Joe Schilling. That you know the, the playing ground is even. Well, and and with we were talking about this earlier with other promotions or with other companies or with other fights and championships you get the three letter words attached to it the WBO, the WBC, yeah, all that yeah, yeah. with this you're getting the lion felt fight belt and it goes between you and Levin I mean that's yeah. I mean that that is, I mean where does that, I mean it makes the belt the number one belt in the world right? It absolutely it makes it very uh, credible because you have two of the top guys in their weight class going up for the first lion fight belt which gives give, instantly gives the, the credibility and uh, like I said before, Lion Fight Promotions always bring some of the best athletes from around the world, so they're already a credible uh, promotion, and I see them going huge within the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we'll ever see it as big as it is in Thailand, right. but it would be right. something that it would be really nice to uh, see. I, I, w I wouldn't be surprised if really? getting to that level, because, uh, I mean, we have a lot of fight fans in general already in America and North America. And I think the more people catch on, it's just the more it's going to grow at, at, at a steady rate. So I keep your eye open. Well, you're from Canada. What's yeah. the uh, Muay Thai scene up in Canada? It's it's similar to America. I mean, you have your Muay Thai community and your hardcore Muay Thai fans. And then you have people who kind of know about it. And then you have people who don't know about it. So it's in my city alone, we have uh, maybe 25 Muay Thai gyms. So it's, it's quite popular. 
Well, in fairness, that's how MMA started off. You know what I yes, mean? It was yeah. a niche group with exactly. hardcore fans exactly. and that passion bred right. to what we're sitting right. here, you right. know, living in now. Yeah, things can definitely take their time. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Now, you fought all over the world. Yeah. Um, where is your favorite fight to pl- uh, place to fight? My favorite place to fight? Uh, you know what? It's, it's a little bit of a tie because I love to fight here in Vegas in, or in America because of the hype and uh, the passion of the crowd and, and everything, the media, it's very well done. But at the same time, I love to fight in Thailand. I fought in front of uh, thousands and thousands of people quite a few times. And when you hear the whole crowd making noise, when you hit somebody like up to 20 or 30,000 people, it's an amazing feeling. So it's, 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 it's a toss up. Well, I have to say, it was definitely interesting watching the, uh, the open workouts, right. seeing the turnout and and we, we had talked about it before, you know, you see uh, MMA, open workouts, you see stuff like that. I, it's a whole different type of striking. I mean, it's on another level. You, you could hear the thugs. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's, it's a little frightening, I'll be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it's what we do. Day and night, day and night, we're training to hit. Frightening, to hit. frightening strikes from a frightening guy. Yes, so. uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and listen, I got to tell you, if you're not down here yet, Get your ass down to the Hard Rock. Come on down. See a great fight between Simon Marcus and Artem Letham for the very first Lion Fight light heavyweight title, legitimizing it, okay, legitimizing Muay Thai here in America and what Lion Fights is doing. Uh, I know you, you know, do you have anything else for him? Because I know he's got a lot going on. No. I'm, and I'm, by the way, I have to say, I, very impressive that you're about to fight. You seem calm as could be, very relaxed, not something you see very often. Um, I pride myself in being more than just a fighter, but a martial artist. So, I mean, you're always going to get certain nerves and whatever, but uh, I'm ready to do the job. Well, we'll let you go get your hands wrapped up. We Thank appreciate you your time very much. Thank you. Thank you Best of luck tonight. Thank Thanks so much for joining us, Thanks, man. Thanks, Simon. My pleasure. Wow, it's, it's amazing. This fight's finally happening. It's finally happening tonight. Simon Marcus and Artem Levin. Check it out, Access TV. Ryan, I mean, you were you were sold instantly when well, you saw these two guys. And that's the thing is, like, I wasn't aware of Simon or Artem until last week. You know, when I knew I would be doing the show, and I and I mean, I've I've watched the last Access event, but catching up with names and all that stuff, you know, it's difficult. And one viewing of their respective previous fights, it was it was obvious. Yeah, I mean. It was, <clears throat> Now, we told you before that we were going to have a who's who of people stopping by, and of course, naturally joining us right now is a brother from another mother. I would say Frank Mira, not to be confused with me, Billy Mira. What's happening, brother? How much, man? How's it going? Good. It's going good. We're excited to have you uh, stop by tonight. Yeah, no, I'm excited to be here. Uh, my wife and daughter are showing up. We're going to check out the fights and uh, have a good time. You excited for the Muay Thai fights here? Yeah, I like them very much. I think uh, my daughter's very interested in, uh, in Muay Thai, too, so... Uh, all martial arts are, you know, part of the uh, you know, MMA community. So, watch different facets. I love going to college wrestling matches, Muay Thai matches, you name it. Yeah. So, so the former world champs here, but it's the daughter who brought them to the Muay Thai <laughs> fights. Actually, no, I was just there one of the fights, and then uh, we were seeing which ones of the kids wanted to come with us when I was asking for tickets. The other, my two youngest boys would rather go, you know, play video games and hang out. Like, eh. Call of Duty, Dad. I don't need that. <laughs> but the daughters, you know, the nine-year-olds, she's like, oh, people are going to get beat up. I want to be there. Awesome. Wow. That's crazy. Now, well, we, we know you got a lot going on. you got a fight coming up. Uh, how's everything been uh, going in camp? Good. Uh, first time I've actually done, like, an official camp where I travel. I actually fly out every Sunday night, and I go up to Greg Jackson's in, uh, in Albuquerque, and I train till Friday morning because I come home, and then uh, so these are my two days where I get to spend with the kids and hang out a little bit, and I go back on Sunday. Wow, that's cool. What, what, why uh, Greg? What, you, what brought that on? Uh, you know what? I just kind of knew the wife and I have been talking about, you know, I've been in the UFC for 12 years, what I needed to do to step up, you know, my game and uh, not training at home, not training, you know, in my own backyard. Where, you know, I'm always a father and a husband first. I show up to practice late because I got baseball practice, drop kids off, or I might leave early because I have a banquet or, you know, a teacher meeting I have to go to. Whereas now, you know, when I travel, I know that Monday through Thursday and Friday morning, I'm just a fighter, you know, I get to train in between practices, I go home to the hotel room and take a nap and relax and I focus on practice, so I'm there a little bit early, I get to stay a little bit late to work on things, well, you know, when you're home, we all got wives, you know, women, you know, if I stay there and practice in today, I better be in the car by 8.15, I can't explain that I'm, I'm working on a new choke or something for 45 minutes, whereas when I'm in Albuquerque, I'll, I'll be up there and, you know, Andre Lasso might be showing me something, you know, Brown, John, you know, Jones is showing me a different you know, way to do something. And I can sit there for an hour afterwards and pick people's brains and 
and be, you know, uh, immersed in the martial arts. Yeah. Uh, one thing I saw, I don't know if it was it was John or Greg, but I, I saw them touching on you doing a really high level amount of cardio for possibly, you know, one of the first times in your career, like really focusing on that. Yeah, you know, actually having practices that all the coaches, you know, uh, you know it's easier because before I think I would try to go to practice and, you know, you know, if I did a hard workout, I wasn't going home and taking a nap, relaxing, recuperating. And now for 24 hours a day, I'm a martial arts fighter. So, you know, I go there and they put me through some hellacious workouts. Um, you know, it's no secret. I think people, I'm a little bit of a, a poor swimmer. You know, two days out of the week, I'm in a pool treading water for Oh, dude, life. give me a pool. Oh, man. I, I was a United, you know, United you States know, certified yeah. swim coach, dude. Level He's six, fish. buddy. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I could tread water for about a minute. What about <laughs> Hey, can he, can he swim with a name like Rock? <laughs> well, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's really funny. I've had those experiences, too, in the past where, like, you know, like, I'll be out with somebody. We're at a, you know, a hotel pool or something, and they jump in the water, and right away, I'm jumping in after them, and they're like, what are you doing? You were drowning. No, I was swimming. No, no, no. You were surviving lucky. You were lucky no, to survive right there. I, I have drowned survival. <laughs> Frank, he, he is such the swimmer that he won't even eat fish. I don't, yeah, I don't eat my own kind. That's cannibalism. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. That shit don't fly. <laughs> yeah, no. You know, and then he, even like holding our breath going underwater. It's a bad because all the other guys can swim well. So now they, they go the length of the pool into the water and I'm sitting there just... Angry at all my <laughs> My father, two things I'm mad at him for. One, he didn't teach me Spanish. <laughs> He's a Cuban leader. You know, so I'm all the Spanish women I miss. <laughs> and then the second one, never got swim lessons. <laughs> well, let me tell He's from an island and I can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> so the two things most inherent to him, you just. Yeah, he's from an island and can't swim. Nah, I'm yeah. not. I, I was born in a desert, so <laughs> water was a real <laughs> was a big, it was a big thing. Hey, a little trick for the breathing underwater, okay? Before you go, if you're going to dive into the pool, make yourself short of breath. And then and then take one big one. Oh, really? And you will hold it forever. Dude. You'll make it. I guarantee. Yeah, right now, work I'm it, work it, and then you shock the hell out of everyone at the pool next time. I'm almost a little bit past half. Right there! Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Look at this. Front me your fans. <laughs> That, did, did you have to uh, hit up that ungodly hill in the Albuquerque? Hill? Yeah, the, the crest of tears, the oh. trail of tears crest. No, so far I haven't had to go up there because it was far out enough that they were doing. They're just trying to get me in shape just to do that. Keep keep Frank in the pool. Yeah, no, no, I've heard about it. They told me actually next week we're going up there next Friday. Yeah. Well, they're nothing but rumors, but they've been you know I've been out there for four weeks. So we're you know, everything's building up. You know that's one thing Greg's good about. It. It's yeah. not just to go out there and prove that I was out of shape and, and smash me the first day, which. Anybody with a whistle can make anybody puke. And just, but is it really building them up to make them a better martial artist? Is it really building them up? He really has a great curriculum where everything is for a purpose. Everything's, you know, every day we do something, we can maneuver, and it's a whole game plan. He reviews the overall game plan and how each little piece, I mean, even when I'm doing drills, like we'll work on like a certain position that day in practice. And then the conditioning workout is orientated upon the fact I'm doing reps and reps and reps of that particular move that we just learned. But now I'm conditioning using the same maneuver, trying to you know, get off the mat or to move a certain way. So everything fits together very well. You know what I like? I like that you're taking yourself out of your comfort zone. <laughs> way out of my comfort I, zone. I, I like that. And, and you know, like it's you important. mentioned, you're, you know, 12 years, you know, you've been around this sport forever. I mean, you've... You fought guys that have been out of the sport forever now. You know, you've been around since the, d the dark days, a lot of fans will call them. Um, you know, and, and I like that. You know, you've been champion. You've been there before, and now you know to get back to that next level, you've got to take yourself out of it because it gets easy when you're, when you're a champion and you, the money's there, the success is there. I mean, like what, it was like 15 fans just walked by screaming your name. When you get recognized, it's harder to get yourself into that position. Yeah, no, it definitely is. You know, coming off of Las Vegas JDS, you know, that, that uh, you know, halfway through the first round, I'm thinking, man, I need to get in better shape. I got to get lighter. <laughs> I don't want to have to think that anymore during a fight. You told me that before going into that fight. You didn't feel you went in with the right game plan. Yeah, you know, well, uh, different things have factored into it. You know, one, you know, my own uh, inadequacies towards driving myself hard enough. You know, and two, you know, up until five weeks before that, I was preparing for Cain Velasquez, who isn't much of a mover around. You know, he comes straight at you. So I don't think the urgency, which... It should have been to always come in lighter and be in shape, but it wasn't as a, as a factor. And then all of a sudden, five weeks out, we're like, okay, now we're not worrying about a guy just running you over. You're gonna have to go chase a guy down. And I wasn't really prepared for it as much as I should have been. And the, the, the blame really goes on me because everybody around me was saying, hey, <laughs> you know, we got to do this, got to do that. But I wasn't really in the. I didn't, you know, really put myself in the best situation to be successful. 
Now, I was just say, you've had this long, illustrious career, career with, with ups and downs. You, you've had goods, you've, had, you've been champion, you've been, but you've always been in Vegas. Was it solely the JDS fight that pushed, you know, kind of you to Jackson's, or was it a conversation after? What led to the change after all these years? Well, my wife had actually been bringing it up for a couple of years now, saying, you know, you know, you're always like... Get out of the house. Yeah, I was going to say, you sure you've been looking into this, Frank? Yeah, I, know. I know. She brought up good points. You know, my father was bringing it up, saying, hey, you're training at home. You know, you're not as serious at it as somebody else. You know, you come to the gym and you're fighting for the two hours you're here, but then as soon as you walk out of here, you're right back to being dad and you're right back to being a husband. Um, the guy you're fighting is probably not thinking that way. He's probably... And, but, I mean, I was having success. You know, coming off the wins, you know, Roy Nelson, you know, Mirko Prokop, Nogueira, all of a sudden. But then the loss kind of, like, <clears throat> makes it harder for me to argue against them. You know, I'm like, well, I won the fight, you know. But now I'm just like, well, no, you lost. And this is why, and this is what we can do to help, you know, prepare that, uh, you know, to move forward and become a stronger fighter. Now, you got a, a fight signed, obviously. You're fighting April 20th against Daniel Cormier on Fox, right? Yeah. Great, Fox great seven. fight. Um, I am so excited about this and fight, I, think I can't one, say enough. One of the reasons you're so excited about the fight is we, we were going to see it before. It kinda, right, right. It kind of, you know, it fell apart. But since then, it, it, you've actually gotten to see Daniel fight uh, another person. Because when that fight was first signed, all you had seen, the, or his biggest win had been Josh Barnett. And that was what, after that fight and the way he slammed Barnett around, people were like, whoa, this guy's the next, you know, greatest thing since sliced bread. Did you see anything in the starring fight that changed your opinion about Daniel Cormier? No, I mean, I pretty much know that, uh, you know, he has extremely strong efficient wrestling ground. Um, I think he throws his hands pretty fast and without abandon. I don't think he's the most technical boxer in the world. I don't think he even thinks he's the most technical boxer in the world. He's definitely not JDS, but, you know, who is? Um, uh, on the ground, though, it uh, really showed me, uh, you know, let's face it, if I had the same guy on the ground, the fight would have ended pretty quickly. He wasn't able to put the guy away through a lack of submission abilities, through a lack of finishing moves. So that's one thing that actually surprised me. I thought he couldn't finish Josh because of Josh's own abilities. But then I realized, no, he just doesn't really have much finishing ability. He catches you with a punch, but let's face it, every heavyweight over 200 pounds... They connect, you're going out. ...has that ability to finish a fight if he catches you. But you have an ability to finish it with a submission. You know, definitive ground and pound where you actually finish somebody off against the cage and, you know, it's menacing, not just... Finally, the referee's like, well, you know, I guess the guy's had enough. You really can't put him away. Let me help in this fight for you. Yeah, you kind of saw Daniel looking at the ref every now and then. Like, dude, you going to stop this, please? Like, yeah. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> tired here. <laughs> but there's other guys out there. Like, you know, John Jones, for example, when he gets on top of somebody and starts dropping elbows, the referee doesn't have a look of, like, well, I guess I can stop it out. It's like, oh, I better get there quick. Because this guy's orbit. Yeah, good. because this is going to get really bad real soon. Someone's career might get hurt. You, know? yeah, I, you had some... You know, interactions with John during the Ultimate Fighter, right? Didn't you? Were you involved with that at all? Yeah, no, I did I was, see I you helped. there. I'm pretty I sure I seen your face. I was one of the assistants. I helped out. How was that experience? I know because he, like, that was a thing that I was surprised about with John coming from Jackson's, bringing you know you in, bringing in John Wood. I was a little surprised about that. Well, you know, the thing is, is that you know, obviously there's phenomenal guys up there, but Greg has a lot of other obligations. Sure. Guys that are fighting for titles. Nine, nine fights. You know, he's running around. You know, not to, to say anything about the show, but, you know, he, he has a bigger fish to fry, I guess would be the expression, I would say, you know. And then, you know, same with, you know, uh, Mike Winklejohn, you know. The, you know, plus the 12, some of the guys that you have out there, the coaches are phenomenal. But to be able to uproot yourself for six weeks, a little bit more difficult than it is, you know, for a lot of other people. Ha have you had a chance to watch the show? Have you been keeping up with it? Uh, a little bit in there, but, I mean, now training for fights, a lot of times yeah. when I'm home, you know, I'm watching video on other things. Well... Your, your, your season kind of came before the, the, the change in delivery. How do you think, you know, there's been a lot of talk, uh, there's some future champions on this show. The delivery of the show, the changing of the film, the way it's filmed has brought a, a lot more people back. How have you viewed the whole season and the talent on it? I think it's awesome. I think obviously you have a hall and a, you know, there's a phenomenal talent. <laughs> Sorry, guys, the wife's blowing up the phone. That's about time i got to start ending it. She's out in the valet waiting for me. <laughs> she didn't accept that first push to our voicemail. She's putting her down. You're not talking to those crazy radio yeah. guys anymore, are you, Frank? No, honey, I'm working on another choke. Yeah, I'll be no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell her the choke. I'm at Jackson's right now. She, she says, hey, the two days you're here, you better get over there, so... <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, we we will let you go. I don't. I don't want to. I do not want to. What are you, you going to argue with? Him? I was going to say. What are we going to argue with? The last, the last.
last thing you want to do is you piss her off. Sit down, Frank. And I know his wife. And she's she's the one who exactly. runs the show there. Listen, I, 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 right now. Yeah, I've, seen him, <laughs> I've seen him. I know Mrs. Mia. I've seen him break countless arms, and I'm I'm telling you, I'm more scared of her. Cormier, <laughs> not so well, much. Mrs. Mrs. Mir, so much. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, we wish you best of luck in the Thank fight. So best much. of luck in training camp, and uh, enjoy the fight tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Frank, Frank Mir got a you know big fight coming up. Daniel Cormier. Uh, you know, it's gonna be. Uh, I think it's gonna be a real good fight. It's gonna oh, be fun. And, and without question, it's on the UFC on Fox, man. Yeah, and not only that, I mean, Frank looks very calm having to face a beast like Daniel Cormier. Listen, Frank has made a career off of facing beasts. I think. Uh, I think it'll be a okay at least. Uh, come oh. preparation for old Daniel Cormier. And look who we got here. Look at this beautiful hey, dude. Hi. How you doing? doing, good, doing good. This is my brother from another mother. Let's put these headphones on you. Just waiting for my brother. Huh? Where, where is Chitty? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, listen, man, let's let's be honest. I, I remember the last show. By the way, right now joining us, UFC lightweight Anthony Ginquani. Give him a the, proper introduction. One, one of the baddest Mamma Jam and Strikers you will ever see. What up, Slimmis? Um, now, I got to tell you, your brother was here last time with you, Chitty, and I know he's going to be coming in, but I have never seen a dead-on more accurate, you know, impersonation of Chris Rock. He is a oh, dead-on yeah. replica. <laughs> oh, you saw the picture on Instagram? Oh, my God. He's I, so like Chris Rock. Yeah, he, he looks, hey, no, but if he doesn't look like Chris Rock, he looks like uh, Michael Vick. Oh. That's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not bad either, right? What? <laughs> Only one of them is going to get you yelled at in the street. <laughs> uh, true that. Hey, I'd rather be Michael Vick. Than Chris Rock. Is Chris Rock's little, his frame is too small. Vic, oh, okay. Okay. What are you talking about? Yeah, you know, what do you mean? Yeah, I can make you laugh. My frame is too much, <laughs> but my wallet's big, <laughs> mofo. Yeah, I can make you laugh, but I can't fight. Yeah, <laughs> I might be able to make you laugh, but my wallet's big. Speak, speaking of uh, fight, I know the last time we had you on, you had just gotten cleared. Uh, what's the going on right now? Do you have a fight booked? Where one working out? What's going on? Actually, right now I'm fighting on the same card as Frank Mir. So, so you yeah, are fighting. Fight. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So Excellent. I'm, fighting, I'm fighting April 20th alongside with Frank Mir. Who are you which fighting? Is, which, is, which is pretty, really awesome. Who's the you know, fight booked against? Uh, fighting Roger Bowling. Oh, Strike Force a lot. Yeah. Yes. Strike Force. So Strike Force versus UFC. And, and, They've been doing a lot of that in that card. They have, they have been. been. Yeah. That yeah. card is all Strike Force versus UFC. Yeah, yeah. And listen, that's got, you know, Strike Force guys have come yeah, in here with a little bit of a tear into the UFC. They have. I mean, it was just like all of us when we're WC coming into the UFC. And, you know, we, we tore it up. You certainly but, did. But, uh, no, it's not going to happen for them. Sorry. <laughs> not gonna happen, baby. Uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm looking, uh, I'm very much looking forward to that card. I'm looking forward tonight. These sick fights going on in the, uh, uh, for Muay Thai here, Lion fights. Yeah. Tomorrow night, UFC 148 in, um, sorry, in Canada. Obviously, well, where is it? And 150. I was gonna say, did you say 148? This yeah. guy's rattled. You can't, so say that. you can't say that by a person who fights for them. There's so many. <laughs> 20, 2012 was a good year for Phil Devine. You are disgracing <laughs> the UFC name. Well, let me ask you a question. Well, well, one thing that bothers me is I went, where is it? And I should have known right away where it is because GSP's on the card. He only fights in one place right now, and that's yeah. in Canada. Uh, that's a little unfair. That's, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, because oh, oh. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, so he's, he's a little punch in the face for that one. <laughs> you do it. You do it. You do it. We've been here it's three hours home. now. It's getting all a little drawn out now. Oh, okay, I'll feel you. <laughs> I gotta say. So, uh, but tell tell us about the fight with bowling. I think it's a really interesting fight. Uh, you know, real tough dude. A guy who came in with a head of steam until oh. actually. The fight, the guy who's fighting tomorrow night, Bobby Volker, was the one who kind of put that on the on the down low. But bowling, heavy-handed guy, likes to wrestle though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Complete, I mean, completely different style match. Yes. Yeah, I mean it's a great style match for me. You know, um, he's a he's a very relentless guy. I know he's gonna bring it. But you know, I'm a man that's coming out for injury, and I'm very hungry, and I'm gonna come out there like a lion. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna come out there trying to just take his head off. Now, what's it been? It's been like nine or ten months. No, it's like six, yeah, it's about six months. Okay, so. is this the longest layoff of your career, or? or this has been. Okay, so yeah. how has that been dealing with that? Oh, man, it was rough, bro. It was real rough. Just just the ring, you know, just not being in the ring and yeah. the cage, not being able to use my, my bread and butter. It, it really pissed me off. I felt like uh, I felt like a guy that, that, just got, that just got off of crack. It was being so, so bad. <laughs> Look at the comparative scene, yeah. crack. Wait, you know, all of a sudden, uh, we're talking about Chris Rock and Pookie again. Yeah. Well, so well, I need it. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it was real tough. I need it real bad, and I'm so happy to get back in there, man. 
Yeah, now, and, and your brother, I, I know you were waiting on him, but he's got a fight coming up next week, right? Yeah, he's nice. fighting in, in Denver against some mountaineer-looking kind of guy. Yeah, right. I mean, the guy looked like Paul Bunyan. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> he's a big, scruffy motherfucker, that's all. There's nothing wrong with that if you're looking to get a date. Hey, I mean, no, there's nothing, but... Hey, the beard's not going to save you. Everybody that's why I got married before I grew my beard. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn, I forgot about him. Ah, oh, <laughs> I need another head. <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. So, um, we, you know, we're talking about lion fights. Like, you got anybody on the card tonight? I know last time you guys were running it around. You know, you had people fighting and you yeah. were trying to come out here. You got anybody tonight? Actually, um, I think one of our amateur girls, she probably just fought by right now. <laughs> I probably missed it. Fanny, she's fighting. And uh, my boy, Kevin Ron. Uh, you got, I'm so excited to watch Kevin oh, fight again. Yeah. Uh, I, hey, and if y'all make me miss that, somebody's <laughs> going down. <laughs> somebody's <laughs> getting knocked if if out. Make, if y'all make me miss my boy fight, somebody's going down. Don't, don't worry, you will not miss either, it. Either, either it's thumb wrestling, arm wrestling, it's something. Plus side, you'll get your fix. So. <laughs> somebody's going down. Now, it, you, my, you strong, my strong hand's back. My strong hand's back. <laughs> Take my week off. <laughs> Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> Yo, you know what? I think we should just, let's, seriously, let's just put down our microphones. We walk away and let this guy just do Chris Rock the rest of the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get a slap down. Hey, hey, well, you know, I, I'll do a baby Dwight impersonation since so I look like Dwight Howard. Not. not. <laughs> you do a little Kinda bit. Kind of do look a like a skinny Dwight Howard, yeah. Damn, he said skinny. Oh, you're going to well, let him say that? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Dwight's like seven foot. Break like beer! Three Break beer! <laughs> <laughs> So you should have been smart there. You say Mrs. Me, Mrs. Oh, me. Yeah. Oh, I've, I've got to add her. Sorry. So uh, tell us a little bit about tonight. We have Artem Levin, Simon Marcus. I know you have a, a history in Muay Thai. This is a fight that we've been talking about. It's been booked like five, six times, and we've been really looking forward to it. What about you? You looking forward to this fight? Oh, I'm, I'm looking very pumped for that fight. Because Artem Levin, I actually saw him training today. He was at one kick. Well, not today. I'm sorry. He was training at Knicks on Tuesday. Uh, yes, yep. And the kid is vicious. So Marcus, he has a lot on his hands right now. But I know Marcus has the skills. Don't get me wrong. Marcus has the skills. He's been in the Muay Thai for a very long time. He's a, one of the top, some of my top tier UFC fighters. I mean UFC. Damn, I'm like stuck in UFC. You guys got me stuck. You guys got me stuck. <laughs> Do you listen to this? It's, it's the well, best fight week in the world. You well, have, wait, we have yeah. tomorrow, tonight, Lion fights tomorrow, UFC. UFC yeah. it's, it's fight week, dude. We're excited. So I'm kind of mixed up. <laughs> I'm too much punches to the brain. <laughs> now, now, one thing, you know, he brought up a good point of be, this being a huge fight weekend. Uh, you know, how are you feeling about tomorrow, um, you know, with the trash talk, with the lead up to it? Oh. This, is, this is a huge event. Boy, you just don't know. I'm looking forward to that. Especially all the crap that, that, uh, that uh, Diaz been talking, that Nate's been, that Nick's been talking. Dude, I'm so ready to see what he's going to bring. Because, I, I mean, even though I know he's trying to sell the show, but if you trash talk like that as much, boy, you better be bringing some heat. And you know he'll do it in the ring. Oh, you yeah, know I we're know. gonna get a prototypical Nick Diaz. I know we're gonna get some of this. Oh yeah. Some of the hands up here. All the hands up. Come on. I, I guarantee. Break, breaking them off. Yeah, yeah. there'll be a, a moment where George is on top and throwing elbows and blooding up Nick's face and. Not that I want to see that. Yeah. I just this is what I think is gonna happen. So we're throwing elbows and shit yeah, now. So, so, so we're throwing elbows. Oh, so now so you're laying on top of me, bitch. Is that what's going on? <laughs> That's what Nick Diaz is gonna be saying the entire night. And this is a fight, you know, we're talking like Artem and uh, and Simon. This is a fight that we've we expected to see before. It never trans transpired, and now we finally get to see it. Big weekend, and that, that's a big fight. How do you see it and going? I really hope that it's not a Mike Tyson, a Mike Tyson style fight. That they both come in there strong. And then one person gets knocked out in, in like 10 seconds. Good chance oh, of that. I'm going to be really pissed off. Well, you, yeah, know, you know, everybody, even though I'm here, in here for free, I got in for free, whatever. But if I pay for it, oh, I better be getting my money for it. <laughs> <laughs> like Mike Tyson, they used to have to give pay-per-view money back back yeah, in the yeah. day. Which is pretty, which is pretty sad. Look at this, Evan Dunham walking Evan by. Evan Dunham! Oh, <laughs> Woo! My nigga, Evan Dunham! <laughs> So, now you, you train over at One Kicks, yeah. okay, but you know, you train with, you've been around with uh, Vegas for a while. Yeah. Well, what is it like training? You know, you see Evan walking by, you ever get to, you know, especially guys in your weight class, you ever get to, to train with any of them? Well, I got to train with Evan Dunham one time, and it, it was an uh, extremely humbling experience, especially in the wrestling department, because, dude, the kids showed me, like, so much, so many great, crazy stuff. And then he was like taking me down. I was like, yeah, yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Here we go. I'm on my back. Yeah, dude. I'm talking about 
He's an extremely quick wrestler, bro. I'm talking about he can snatch you from every different type of angles. And just like you'll be, you'll be standing in front of him right now, and then he's a ghost the next minute. You don't know where he's at. He's getting your back. Bop. Tossing you on his back. But yeah, it, it, it was a really good, great experience. And I love it. And I love training with these guys. They even like show me a lot of great wrestling moves that uh, hopefully one day I get to use them in the ring. In the cage, I'm about to say ring. I'm, you, got, you guys got me mixed up. You guys we, get me mixed up. We're the Muay Thai saying, fight. It's all I'm good. I'm saying ring and I'm saying cage. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. I'm saying UFC and I'm saying Muay Thai. Damn it. It's oh, on. At least, damn. You, at, least, at least you didn't bring up the Yama God, Pit. Damn. <laughs> the Yama Pit. Oh, my Phil, God. Phil knows about the Yama Jesus, Pit. Why would you bring up Yama? <laughs> I, I can't wait, wait, why would we not bring up Yama? That's a better question. What is the Yama pit? You never, okay. Oh, boy. Wait, are you talking about the you, World Combat League pit type stuff? Y- Yama, they, what they tried one year, uh, Yama, the, Bob Myrowitz, the original owner of the UFC. Yeah. He tried to get back into MMA after, you know, Zufa had brought it to where it is. And he decided that he was going to put together an event with all old heavyweights. He had, like, Olaf Tektorov in there. Butterbean was in there. Uh, Mark Carr. Uh, and, Took Mark from the used car dealership yeah, yeah. and brought him out. But the 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 ring or the cage was on a 90 degree angle coming up to the ca- up towards the cage. Oh, wow. So you had like a low center and then it came up at a 90 degree angle up against the cage. Oh, wow. Needless to say, that event never took place again. It was a step better than an alligator moat. I don't know how that's gonna work out. Somebody <laughs> not, try, not somebody well. try to run, you come right back. It didn't run. It didn't. It work. did not work out. H- hence, only one event. Hey. You, try, you try to run. You try to run up. Run up the ring, you're running right back down. <laughs> running it, send it to a punch. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, it was the worst idea ever. Oh, yeah. They should have never done well, it. I'm Unlike glad, lion I'm fights. Glad, I'm yeah. glad it didn't Unlike. last that long. So It, it definitely been, didn't. Not like lion fights like Ryan says over here. We're now in our ninth match. Finally getting uh, their, their first title. Friday night on Access TV. Check it out. It's going to be amazing. But let's get back really quickly to UFC tomorrow night. Because okay. that, you know... We brought it up, and the first thing you say is Diaz GSP. That's all anyone's talked about. Because I, that's all anybody wants but, to see. But, really. but that's because the it thing. Is, that really it, is. it is. But this is a pretty good card you have. You have no, when you look I, at these welterweights on this card, you have Johnny Hendricks against Carlos Condit, a fight that could headline a, a many events, I believe. Which Darren Elkins is 4-0, and, oh, and Dave, he's on the and undercard. Then you got, Dave, then you got Dave, Dave Marquardt coming back. Dave yeah, Marquardt against J- Jake Ellenberger. But... What it is, everybody's saying is, fuck all that! It's all about <laughs> yeah, <yeah>. GSP. <laughs> well, at least in the meantime, they'll get to see some quality fights. Yeah. They definitely will. Now, you uh, you are probably fighting in what is arguably considered the, the, the toughest division in, in the UFC, the, the lightweight division. You've got, you know, so many great fighters. And like you talked about with Strike Force, you guys did the same thing with the WEC when you came over. You know, there was that question, can these guys in the WEC hang with the guys in the UFC? And you put that to yeah, rest which, right which away. You showed them. Yeah, yeah, especially when they put me up against with uh, Edson Barboza my first go yeah. around. I mean, your first, your debut fight in UFC, and they put you against, like, the, the most strongest, toughest Brazilian out there, that I, I think. I think. And then, I mean, I, you, you're going, like, three rounds with them toe-to-toe Front, like fresh off the fresh off the foot, everything like I'm talking about uh, like Van Dam and Van Dam and that, and that one and that one guy for Bloodsport. Ah. Tong Po. Yeah, Tong, yeah. I'll tell yeah, you yeah, when I saw that out. movie, I re- Kevin Ross had explained to me last time that dude, it is not like that in Thailand. Yeah. Dude, don't be kicking cylinder that, blocks. That, that's a shame because that's all I dreamt about that's last night before coming about. here. Dude, that's, that's that's the movie that actually made me love Muay Thai. That really? right there, especially Tong Po. Yes. <laughs> now, where where were you living so at that time? <laughs> I was living in Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, and then finally in 1998, we finally got Muay Thai because my teacher, Saxon, moved down from California to Dallas to start teaching Muay Thai, which was so awesome. Definitely. So that, that's the only martial arts I ever wanted to learn. Even though I was, like, taking other martial arts for my dancing, my b-boying, you know? <laughs> but Muay Thai was, like, the... Martial arts I wanted to learn to defend myself. And, and wh- why was that? I mean, was it just because of the fact that it's more uh, of a the Blood style? Sport. Is it is it just the movie or? It's, no, no, no. It's well, the movie inspired me more, but it was just the style and how like the, when they throw a kick, they actually like dig in, not like they kick their karate. You're like ah, <laughs> do all that touch slaps, you know. 
True story. I took karate for the first time when I was seven years old. I quit a week later because all they taught us was this. Bugs Bunny. We were running up and down the gym blocking, and I was like, yo, when am I going to get to kick someone? So defense that's why I'm learn, fat and right learn, about the sport now. Learn, learn defense first. So that's a totally different thing about uh, Muay Thai because they show you everything right off the bat. Uh, I, I gotta Except say, for if you go to Thailand. Thailand is different. Then you have to work like only your kids for one week, and then you're working on your hands for the next week. Have you been there? No, but I'm trying, I'm trying to go out there. My teacher tells me how, how they do out there. You just look at this with another guy. I'm sure he's been to Thailand. Hey! 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 I want a lap dance from Ray Seppo. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. It sounds like every time someone walks by. Wait, wait, that's just, Ray Seppo! Ray. It just got real quiet, and Billy's like, I want a lap dance from that man. <laughs> Come on, my ninja. Oh, Ray, Ray, Ray's my boy over here. How are you doing? Come on, Ray. Give me, give me five. You, don't trip, Ray. Just we'll break everything. What's going on, brother? What's up, brother? Always a pleasure. What's up, big guy? Ray Zeppo. And I knew it. I said I this guy. got the star here. Oh. No, no, you're the Dude. star. <laughs> <laughs> we, we said it right away. As soon as Scott Kent was talking earlier, and he's talking about the celebrities coming by, and I'm like, and you know Ray Zeffo's sitting in the front row. Yeah, yeah, you you know it. it. Let's get a prediction from Ray. Right, right. Main event. Tonight, the main event. You got yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sit down, Ray. Really quickly. Sit down. Oh, yeah. We don't want to We don't want to take up too much of your time. No, no. <laughs> But you got one of the greatest kickboxing legends off. You gotta ask the guy. Yeah, you have the great one of the greats in the sport comes by. You gotta get his prediction. Artem Levin tonight taking on Simon Marcus for the first ever light heavyweight title. The Lion fights. How do you think it goes, Ray? How do you think it's gonna go? I pain. I <laughs> pain. Just pain. That's exactly what's gonna happen. I, I, I'm not too sure who to go with. I mean, you know, it's still a 50-50 fight to me. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. It could be anybody's fight. Yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. They got Simon Marcus right there. He was great, great enough to come on a little earlier. He obviously very looking much older in this fight. Five times it's been booked. Now it finally comes to tips. Now it happens, right? What about you? We know about your kickboxing experience. We know what you've done. What about what Lion Fight is doing right now here in Vegas? Sorry, I completely missed you. Know, more Chris, stars Chris Rock there. walked in. <laughs> Chris Rock walked in. <laughs> so, what, no, what do you think about the way Lion Fights is bringing up the Muay Thai back here in America? I, I think it's great. Um, we need somebody to, you know, keep promoting kickboxing. Uh, listen, it's my first love, so I want to see it happen. I want to see it grow. But listen, this is the, the city of uh, the capital of the world, of fights in the world. So, that being said, you know, I, I want to see that happen, I, and 100 billion percent, I'll always be here to support it. Yeah, it was, it's great. And it also, it also seems like Lion Fights does it similar to the way the World Series of Fighting does, is they came out the box hard, they built, and they put on a clean, simple show where the talent speaks for itself. A absolutely, and you know, um, when, you can, when you can start like that, with that kind of talent, you can't go wrong. You know what I mean? You're always going to keep moving forward. Of course, listen, there, there's always room for, for growth. So. Uh, I, see, I think uh, they're doing an amazing job, and I think it's going to grow. Yeah, spe actually, Ryan brings up a great point. World Series of Fighting, you have your second event next week in New Jersey. Tell us how excited you are. Uh, I can't wait to get out there. Matter of fact, I leave for uh, New York on Sunday. I have a three-day tour there for media, and then uh, we're out in Atlantic City, um, New Jersey, at the Rural, Rural Resorts um, Casino out there. And, I mean, you know, it's the, the card is stacked. I'm, I'm, Super hyped and super excited about it. Yeah, Arlovsky and Anthony Johnson yep. main event. Uh, yeah, oh, got a good fight. Good fights going on. Um, how's the reception been there? I know because I know you've already gone back to New York. You've been there a few times. You're doing the media circuit. Right. How, how how is it over there? Because I, Billy and I come from New York, and when we left New York, I'm telling you, it was it was they started wor worse than a five dollar <laughs> hooker. It was dead. There was there was no. No real like love for, for the sport there. How is it uh, since you've been there? Have you seen um, it? Listen, you know, I, I can't thank the fans and, and the media enough uh, for all the love and support that uh, we're just finding has gotten from day one. And, um, you know, it, it's uh, it's really heartwarming to feel that and to be, or to feel welcome um, not only in New York but also in Atlanta City. So. I'm really looking forward to that. Well, to correct Phil, it's not that there's a lack of love for MMA in New York because they want it. It's actually right. the governing parties that are the problem there. The fans, though, as soon as that's sanctioned in New York, you are going to see a reception that is going to rival the Super Bowl. I'm telling you right now. I mean, that's imagine, 
that fight in New Jersey, and it was totally different from any other place that I went to. Wow, and wait problem. till it gets to in New York, York, my in friend. What, in what way? Uh, New York. No, no, I mean, in what way was it different? Like, completely oh, different? Oh, because I'm talking about everybody. Because you could tell that they, that they loved it more than anyone. They're deprived. Because so they, they, they were, like, chin and chairing and all this stuff a lot heavier than... Yeah, and yeah, New, New York, York. And if it's like that in New Jersey, most of the... It's probably going to be like that in New York. Because, <laughs> hey, look, we share some of the same sports teams, for crying yeah, out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> New York yeah. and New Jersey. <laughs> so, Can you imagine that Madison Square Garden? Oh, my God. It's going to be amazing, you know, Ray. You know, I really don't understand why they care more for boxing. And it's I not think that they, boxing is more brutal. Than, I think what it oh, is, is without question is is boxing in Madison Square Gardens has such a history. That's the way it is. And the only Absolutely. reason the only reason that mixed martial arts isn't legal in New York is because of the culinary union. All right, let's be honest. It's yep. because of the fact that the Dana White, the Fertitas, they're not down with the unions. They're not. It's not their thing. Oh, okay. That's what's causing all the issues. And when you have it's all backroom let, BS. You, yeah, when you have the background BS, and let's be honest, has anybody met a politician that is not crooked? <laughs> no. It's kind. It kind of goes with the territory. So yeah. it's just the way it's going to be until those two get on the same page. And I just don't know if that's going to happen. That is true. You know. But I'd love to see it. But Ray, listen. I know we were walking in. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks, Ray. Thanks for all the right. prediction. And listen. Best of luck next week. World Series of Fighting 2, NBC Sports, next Saturday night. Ray, you want to drop anything on some of the new signings of World Series of Fighting? Say that again? You want to drop anything on the new signings of World Series of well, Fighting? I'm not sure if you I mean, I'm sure you've heard the news about John Fitch. Um, yes. yes. That happening, and so, you know, that's huge for us, and uh, we, you know, we're really happy that uh, he decided to come to World Series of Fighting, and uh, there's some big things coming forward, and... Uh, coming ahead and uh, exciting times to come for Wizards of Fighting. Uh, and we also suggest everybody go check it out because it's, Absolutely. it's a great up and coming organization. If you miss it live, watch it on NBC Sports, uh, NBC Sports Network. It's going to be live there and um, they'll replay the hell out show. of it because they oh, did yeah. it last time. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I will be watching. They did. They did it last time. They saw they, they saw the reaction from the audience there in the at that were there and from the people around the world. You right. know, and they re I think they were only planning on showing it once and then maybe one replay. Exactly. And that thing was showed like every week. You turn on NBC oh, Sports, yeah. every day it was on and on yeah, and on. Yeah. So again, congratulations. Like, yeah. Again, like I said, you can't thank the, the fans and, and the media and all you guys. Uh, you guys are amazing. Thanks, guys, and uh, God bless, and enjoy the night. Yes, right. you too, Ray. Enjoy the fight. Nice up, <laughs> And now... We need, we need Anthony to do... Like, you just need to hire this guy to do all your intros and outros. <laughs> I, like, I think this guy's going to walk... I wonder... I'm going to be your hype man. Yeah. I'm going to be your hype man. Yeah, boy! <laughs> Burt Watson's got a rival. <laughs> and, uh... Oh. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Guys... Everybody? Chris Rock is in Pokey. the house. Pokey is in the house. <laughs> he does look like Chris Rock. My damn. <laughs> so what's up, Chitty? How you doing? Good, good. How y'all? Good, good. You got a fight next week. How's everything leading up? RFA? Uh, it's good. Uh, the, the hard training is finally over with. So time for the fun part. Time for the fun part? <laughs> yeah. Now you're the main event, right? No, co-main. Co-main event. I wish. Wish. Well, one more, one more <laughs> I'm fight. Not, I'm not well, cool, I'm not cool enough yet. Oh, dude, listen. I'm not cool enough yet. <laughs> last, last time I saw you fight, when you fought here, that was yeah. that was just uh, impressive, man. I, I was, I mean, I knew you were a striker and you could you could throw some shit down, but that yeah. was on another <laughs> level, man. Thank you, thank you. you know, Try to put on a show, man. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the fight next week. Thank you. Yeah, now, you, this is fun. You got two brothers like this. You know, you got the oh, fighting, question. Fi fighting brothers, you know, the Diaz brothers, no, the we're, Miller we're, we're brothers. They're better than the Diaz they, brothers. They, whoa, smile, whoa. they smile more than the Diaz Are you brothers. Crazy? No offense. But he may hear this. <laughs> we're, we're, friendlier. Oh. we're friendlier than we're Diaz friendlier. brothers. Nice. We're, we're more approachable. Yeah, Even though yeah. we're big and black, yeah. still more approachable. <laughs> we're, we're, we're dark and lovelier. <laughs> Sweet chocolate, right? Yeah, sweet chocolate. Sweet sweet chocolate. Sweet sweet which which one's dark and which one's lovely? I'm dark. Uh, you can have lovely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's, 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 let's go ahead and make that one handsome. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, listen, we've been, we've been sitting here the entire night talking about Muay Thai. We brought up UFC a little bit, mostly talking about Nick Diaz and GSP tomorrow night. Um, but let's really quickly, let's look at this card. GSP Diaz, you might, you guys want to talk a little bit about tomorrow night? Uh, let's go ahead. You excited? Are you excited? Yeah, Chitty? yeah, yeah. Your actually, actually, excited? yeah. Actually, because yeah. it's my weight class. Too, it's so. your weight class, right? <laughs> yeah. Now you got a uh, Nick Diaz, GSP. I mean, G GSP. We know what what the formula is there. He's gonna take him down, and he's gonna pound on him. 
wash, rinse, repeat. We're going to see the same thing over and over again. I think GSP can take this fight wherever he wants, yeah. whenever he wants. Yeah. Right, and so my, I, my, I guess my question to the two fighters would be, me, I can't see any way Nick wins. I can't see him volume punching. Someone said off the back, but who's going to submit George off the back? Nobody to you two. Right. Yeah, exactly. So how does Nick Diaz win this fight tomorrow? I don't, honestly, I don't. I don't see him winning it. There's a, pretty a, much there's no way. A surprise flying go-go yeah. putter. <laughs> or, or he, he does box him up and put him in or, go-go's. Or, he, he, a Kayuki. Or he pulls off a Matt Sarah. Yeah. yeah. But that could oh, happen. But does he have the power to? Yeah, the extra power. We, we, know we, we know he throws in volume, but how much uh, yeah. how much power is there? He doesn't have the power well, that Matt Sarah has. Well, he did knock out Robbie Lawler. So. He did. Yeah. The only yeah. person to knock yeah. out Robbie yeah. Lawler. Yeah. And listen, My it, favorite fight of all time. It was not a TKO. Robbie Lawler fell right. like a freaking tree. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Let's be honest about it. So he does have a punch of chance. So, okay. So, but you know, let's not count him out. Let's not count him out. We were talking earlier about the odds with Joe Schilling. Uh, GSP is a five to one favorite. Do you think that's just could be justified, or do you think it should be closer? Five I, to one. That's a lot of money. I think I think Diaz always oh, he always, he always has a chance. <laughs> I don't think you should ever count Diaz out. Hey, period. No. But I, I don't see how the hell you, how he can win this fight. Hey, I don't I don't see him winning this fight no. anywhere. The, on the, 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 the only thing I could see was him kind of uh, you know getting George into a psychological battle, like yeah. carrying yeah, over yeah, from the yeah, presser yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But George is such a machine, and it's so predictable what Nick's going to do. Yeah. And that's another thing. Nick has fought, you know, essentially every fight he's ever fought the same way. That's not yeah. to say he doesn't improve and doesn't say he doesn't have a game, but you know what you're getting with Nick Diaz. True. Exactly. But, side. but remember what Nate did to Cowboy? Got, yeah. got Absolutely. And pretty much Nick is doing the same thing, getting into his head. But, now, but Cowboy's if, a hothead. If, but if, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's but, yeah, yeah, but yeah, also not the same. Right now, has been pushing. True. Has been pushing yeah. GSP over the edge. So, yeah. hey, he already said that he is pushing him to the point where he is gonna be like a totally different person in that cage. Put him in that but dark then, place. But then again, remember when uh, when Josh Koscheck was talking a lot of noise? Well, right, that, that, right, that was yeah. another thing that I, I heard GSP in an interview this week, and he was saying that he was like, listen. Nick Diaz is not doing anything different than anybody else. Yeah. He's like, everybody I fought has been disrespectful. Yeah. It's, you know, I can count. The, it's, if I actually gave you the list, it's less people have been disrespectful to me. So I think, George, and you know, you're right. The one way I think Nick does this is to get into George's head. I just don't know if that's possible. I think George is so well trained. And, and fighting not only trained with Jackson, but training with Murat Sahabi, guys like Hajo Gracie and John Donner. Mentally, GSP is a, is a machine. Yeah, yeah. He really is. So I, I don't see any way for Nick Diaz to win, and that's a shame because I freaking love Nick Diaz. I like his fights. I like watching you know? him fight. And the, the only thing I want to see tomorrow night from GSP to you know, listen, there's there's no doubt what a great fighter is. I want to see him finish a fight, and what? the only way I see him finishing Diaz is cuts. Yeah. And if you look yeah. at and if you look at his there's prior career, I mean. Yeah, that's how George set the MMA world on fire. Jason Miller, Jay Huron, he destroyed people. Yeah. So we know it's in there, and I think that's part of what becomes so frustrating. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know we can do it. Yep. I yeah. don't know, maybe uh, with, with all this crap talking Diaz is doing, maybe he'll bring it out of him. Let me ask you a question. What do you guys think GSP's dark side is? <laughs> dark place. <laughs> I have a dark side. I think it's because of all those black you girls. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he doesn't mess with those black girls. That's his dark side right, right? there. Right. <laughs> it's a rumor. My dark place. Things. My dark place is, things. is my bedroom. <laughs> it's my bedroom. Dark place. <laughs> Turn off the wow. it, it, It's dark with a little, a little bit of white. A little bit of white. He's got a bad GSP for an East Coast dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I remember the last time I saw him out here, dude. He was on stuff. He was on a good system. He was on a dice. He was on a nice dice. He likes some dark meat. He's, <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, no, 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 at Thanksgiving, give me that leg. Give me the leg. I'm okay with that. Don't waste that. <laughs> oh, Sorry. So, all right, but, but, right, let's move on because all right, we all, we're all in agreement that GSP retains the title tomorrow night. Yeah. A lot of other great fights on that card. They, exactly. Yeah. And we, we've talked about, you know, welterweight division. You have... Based on UFC rankings, that's, I don't I don't really base count on yeah, rankings yeah, for anything. Yeah. But based on the rankings that are out there, you have six of the top ten welterweights fighting on on this card. Yeah. And the undercard, the, the co-main event of Johnny Hendricks going against Carlos Condit, who Carlos Condit is pure violence. 
pure violence, yeah. and Donnie Hendricks will knock you out like there's no tomorrow. Think about but this. But Donnie Hendricks, I mean, Donnie Hendricks has to, has to catch Carlos Condit. He does, he does, but he's got the I wrestling, think, which... Yeah, he has a chance. It's he such a tough chance. fight to pick out. It, it yeah, is yeah, such yeah. a tough That's fight. That's one fight I wouldn't bet on. And nope. if you think no. about John, Johnny Hendricks, okay, first off, I'd be really upset for him if he does lose because he's been promised a title yeah, shot three shots yeah, in a row, yeah, yeah. and each time he lo he doesn't get it. And I don't think anyone has the natural power of Johnny in that division. No, 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 oh, no one does. Yeah, yeah. But if you think about it, Johnny Hendricks last two or last three of his last two fights, Martin Kamen and jo uh, John Fitch. Yeah. He dispatched the both of them in a combined under one minute. Yeah, 44 yeah. seconds to nine. And that's not guys you do that to. Yeah, I mean, those are guys that don't get stopped. Yeah. So I, I just, this is, so, this I think is the most interesting fight on the card. But it's like Anthony said, you got to catch Carlos. Yeah. And Carlos is the one of the most elusive. methodical fighters in all of MMA today. He is. And I would, listen, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Johnny needs to go back to the wrestling. You yep. because he's abandoned wrestling for a while. Yep. You know, he's knocking people out. He's abandoned the wrestling. He's gonna have to go back to that wrestling. I, mean, I think for Carlos. If he got well, all that power. Well, what happens if he goes and shoots it on a double leg and he takes got, one of those vicious yeah. knees from Carlos? True. Yeah. yeah. That's why you gotta go to the body sometimes. Yeah. A little Dong Hyun Kim action. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So this is a great fight. I mean, I. I, I I don't know if I could even break down this fight. It's too close to call. I wouldn't want to. Yeah, true. So yeah, that's the type of fight you have to leave alone. Put it, but put I, I, th I think if Johnny uses wrestling, then, then he'll take the fight over. He, he needs right to go back him. to yeah. his roots. I think that that would be his fight. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it would be, uh, and I think it would be a damn shame if he wins and he doesn't get that title shot. Because yeah. I will be honest, I oh. think he is 100% right when he, he says GSP doesn't want a piece of him. I, think, I, I don't think he does. I don't think anyone wants to fight. I, I think there's, there's a lot of people in that division yeah. that don't want to fight. Because, like, GSP, we're talking about, like, how tomorrow all he needs to do is win is take the fight, use his wrestling, take the fight to the ground, do that. It's not a guy you can do. GSP can't do that with Johnny, with Johnny. Hendricks. No, no, no. Johnny doesn't think GSP can take him down at all. So, I mean, you know, GSP's always had that, that fallback. If I can't stand with you, I'll take you down and put you yeah, on your yeah, ass. Yeah. But with Johnny, he won't be able to do that. I think, and Hendricks is only getting better too. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I think GSP's stand up is better than Johnny's, but if Johnny catches him, then that's a whole, that's a whole different story. Uh, it's, a, it's definitely a fight. I hope to see. Uh, will we? I don't know because I, I don't know how to pick yeah. this w a winner in this yeah. fight. It's really um, tough. So yeah, definitely too, too tough a fight. But another one, Jake Ellenberger going against the returning Nate Marquardt. Nate Marquardt, you know, looked real good in his strike force debut, knocking out Tyrone Woodley. But then came back with that with lackluster the, performance. Against, yeah, yeah. Tariq Zafadine, yeah. leg kicked the hell out of him. I got to be surprised. To be, <laughs> I, I'm surprised that Nate was able to take this fight because that fight was like two and a half months ago. I'm surprised he could still walk. Yeah, dude, I was surprised today he didn't walk up a weigh-ins with a freaking cane. <laughs> like, I just need a little support. I haven't been, <laughs> able, to, <laughs> I haven't been able to walk right. You know, and, and Nate's one of those guys that was never going to fight in the UFC again, and yeah, here, it's a great back, story. Yeah. It is, and listen, Nate Diaz, I mean, uh, Nate Marquardt, one of the guys that a couple years ago just went for the middleweight title against Anderson Silva. You know, a contender of middleweight, does he have, does he still have what it takes to be a contender in the welterweight like division? I think he does. I think, yeah, I think, I think he, does. he does. Oh, absolutely. With that Tyron Woodley yeah, fight, it, it's it's there. It's, it's yeah. in him. But who knows? Yeah, I think what you saw with that Woodley fight was that, that thing that Mark Ward always has, and that was that killer instinct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you, you really saw it. He, yeah. he saw he had him hurt, and he went on. He loaded on him. Uh, and he know. could take a shot as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. He yeah. showed resiliency in that fight. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely did. And, and you, you brought up the killer instinct, and I think it's one of the most underrated thing. I mean, they talk about it a lot, but a lot of fighters, even if they talk about having it, don't have it. Yeah. There's that gap between the, the knockdown and the finish. It's the guys like the Carlos Condits. It's, yeah. it's the guys like the Nate Marquardt that are on you in a split second ready yeah. to finish you off. Yeah, that good point. And that actually, uh, there's a guy on the undercard that I want to talk about that has that finishing ability and that, that, that killer instinct. But we'll get to him in a second. There's an, another interesting fight at middleweight on this fight. Nick Ring against Chris Camozzi. Okay, both these guys, uh, season 11. I don't, I don't know him. Okay, Nick Ring? No. We don't know no. Nick. Remember, remember I barely, Nick Ring? I, I, barely, I barely watched the, the show. He knows it more than uh, Nick, no, Nick, I don't know Nick. Nick Ring Jeez. was on, they were actually both on season 11 of The Ultimate Fighter. Right. Uh, Nick uh, Which was, was season 11? Season 11 was, who, who was the coaches? Was that me? No, was it Mir? No, I think it was Chuck Liddell and uh, Tito Ortiz. Oh, that was oh, way back then. Okay. <laughs> was, that, was that born around then? Was that? <laughs> no, it was before their third fight. <laughs> but um, 
you know, uh, <laughs> Kamozi, he was cut from the UFC after that, but then he's come back and he's won four in a row. Yeah, he's like five and two in the yeah, UFC. He, yeah. and, and Nick Ring, he's like, I think he's 12 and one overall, four and one in the UFC. I can't say each guy's won me over as far as impressive fights, but it's an interesting fight at middleweight. Won me over with their toughness, that's for sure. Definitely yeah. tough dudes, well, and, and it's an interesting, you know, Kamozi's a Muay Thai fight. Yeah, yeah. you guys are talking about that, I really want to see that fight now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah they're all. You guys are like talking to me, you're like, oh yeah, this is going to be the best one. <laughs> I'm a used car so Honestly, yeah. they're, like, they're gonna be best one on a, I'm telling you, it's gonna be a fight. <laughs> Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Right, right, you got me just waiting. Monster to truck, monster truck, monster truck, monster truck. Woo! Monster truck, monster truck. Someone needs to get that on film. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> Hey, what is she drinking? I want some. I don't know if that was alcohol. This is Las Vegas. I'm getting two of what she's having. Exactly. After your fight, you got to wait. Did you see that dance that she just did? Dude, she was ripping it right now. That was better than the worm. That was the white worm. That was the white worm. That was the worm you find on the bottom of tequila. Which is yeah, yeah. It, it, dead in hallucinogens. Dead in without rhythm. Exactly. What time, what time does the main car start right now? Seven. Uh, tonight, 7 o'clock. You're still okay. We're not, we're not, we're not going to pull you over this. <laughs> no, uh, no, because we're, we're, no, we're actually missing uh, Fanny. Okay. Oh, yeah. Ooh, all right. Well, you know what? We don't Let him get in there, yeah. We don't want to screw you guys over. Listen, Anthony, look forward to your next fight. Right. April 20th thank on you, Fox. You. Okay, against Roger Bowling. Yeah. GD, Best of luck. GD's Chitty. RFA 7. Next RFA week. Seven. In yeah. Denver. It's Friday. Best of luck, man. Thank you. Good luck. Enjoy and we love you guys. You guys are always welcome on our yeah, show. Yeah. Enjoy enjoy the the life, we always love coming on to your show, man. That's why we try try our best to get on time. We're from. We're That's back. Why We're I tell you, I like to come on the show and have a good time. Black. He's got to get his Chris Rock impression down. I'm telling you, you got your face with his voice. Put it together. <laughs> Some Cyrano shit, but you yeah. know, like, have a, have a, you sit in a bush and you just go on stage. And just <laughs> Why don't you guys do, the show is Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle. And you <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I was like, Dave Chappelle? Damn! No, it would nice definitely, nice Chris, it would definitely like Chris Rock and Dwight Howard. Oh, Howard. Black comedian. I, I, like the, I like Dwight yeah. Howard. Uh, Dwight, Dwight Howard was a little better. <laughs> yeah, yeah Dwight Howard's a whole God lot better. damn! Yeah. <laughs> God damn, what's going on over here? <laughs> I, my... my you, you, Somebody Chris just Rock. walked up and said, Chris, Chris Rock, Rock is here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's my, my, my favorite Chris Rock segment is when he's just like, I would never, <laughs> ever, ever hurt a girl. Never hit her. But I shake the <laughs> shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> so, but guys, enjoy the rest of the fight. Enjoy right, the thank fights. You, hey, thank you guys so for having us, man. Always really a pleasure. It. You oh, guys are the best. best you go. Go. Brothers. You guys are the best. No, no, no. No! no. no. I'm telling you, Burt Watson has his, his better be looking on job security right yeah. now. Yeah. Joe Gordon's hey, got this on lock. Joe got this down. If you need a hype man, I am your uh, man. All the way. <laughs> through and through. Nice. But I think not, we're going to have to but, take, we're gonna have to uh, take you up on that. But just uh, don't call uh, me and say we're playing. Because there will be a fight. Yeah. <laughs> My brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, name, I, I, I name. Anybody. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks so much. Oh, Great time. Pleasure. We'll see you guys inside at the Muay Thai event. All right, what's up? Yo. Yo. brothers. Always a blast when they're here. What's up, Chief? Thanks, Chris man. Rock. Jim. Yeah, like no blast. Chitty's the man. Anthony's the man. You know, and, and you know what's awesome? I remember one of the first times that I met Anthony was right before his fight with one of our buddies, Danny Castillo. And I was like, dude, you know, you're fighting my boy Danny. I, I got to root against you. But then... <laughs> After you talk, it's like he's one of the friendliest guys. Anthony and Chitty, they're, they're fr every time they fight somebody, they're like best friends. They're like Pat Barry. They're, they're best friends afterwards. Are they always like ecstatic like that? Too? Always. That's, always. That's impressive. They're, they're, they're always a lot of fun. They have a great personality. And to think Chitty's cutting weight right now. He's been in training camp. He's got a fight a week away. Yep. You know, most people in the, right now are in the pissed off mood. He just welcomes it. Come on, let's do it. Yeah, let's have a good time with it. So we suggest we're going to do it again. Yeah, We're definitely. about winding down here. Yeah, we only got a couple minutes left because we, we have to go inside and we yep. want to watch the fights. Yeah, we want to watch the fights too. Yeah. I mean, you know, we love to sit out here and, and, and hang out with you fine people, but, but we want to get in and see some, some Heineken. Some well, the, the thing is, is, is Billy is, is such a good-looking individual that usually Jen and Scott from Lion Fights, look at him just put, put on that face. They, they, they hire him to sit up front, just draw the people in. 
we've done that job because I know I that am very he, charming. I know Keeps that action around packed. the ring. I know that place is packed right now. I'm real excited to get in there. Make sure you tune in tonight. Lion fights start half an hour on Access TV. Gonna be a blast. And I was gonna say, you have the best commentary team in all of fight sports with Pat Militich and Mike Chavello on Access TV. And I'm not just saying that. Nope, Those guys not. have an amazing rapport. Not only an amazing rapport, the knowledge between the two of them yep. is unheard of. It really is. Dude. I just want to know if they're as professional as we are. <laughs> no, but <laughs> you know we got a fat bone. That is, that is, you know, that is the big question. Yeah, I don't I think mean, anybody's as professional. Uh, as we could are. they clown around for for two hours straight? I don't know. I don't know. That's the question. Have, have to get them on and find well, out. We will have to get them on next time. We'll have to get them on next time. But man. before we wrap up, we got five minutes. Anything else closing on UFC tomorrow night? UFC 158. I just want to say I am so stoked for this fight card coming up tomorrow. Uh, you know, a lot of people say it's it, either you got people who say you can go any direction. Any fight could go in any direction on any given day. Uh, people say it's, it's a shoe and shoe, you know, George St. Pierre, but it's such an interesting fight. I don't think you can say definitively any one guy's going to win that fight. And then, of course, naturally, um, in a strange way, rooting for Johnny Hendricks. I want to see him, I, and I love both fighters. That's no disrespect to Carlos because I think he's such a great fighter. But let's face it, Dana, if Johnny Hendricks gets past Carlos Condit tomorrow night, I guess it's safe to say, oh, yeah. without a shadow of a doubt, this man deserves to go up against GSP. Could you imagine GSP loses tomorrow night? Wow. You know, I, I, what I don't, a game I don't changer say, that is. I don't want to say I'd be so, I would be highly surprised oh, if we he would. Won, but I, I, I just, it's because of, of when you watch Diaz and oh, D, D, Nick Diaz, is, both Diaz brothers, let's be honest, their Achilles heels is wrestling. They're, that's their one Achilles heel. That's the thing they can't deal with is wrestlers. And it's, I don't know if it's because of the fact that they're so comfortable on their back that they don't care about getting taken down, but you got to get take care of about like Benson Henderson. Yeah. Benson Henderson took N Nate down a will and d didn't have to worry about being submitted because he's got the submission defense. And, and that's actually a great point. If, if you want to know what's going to happen on Saturday, look at Ben and Nate, and I think it's going to be very similar. It's not a knock on either of the Diaz's. I think they can beat anyone on any given night. What I do want to say about 158 tomorrow is that I think it's – kind of should be the benchmark for what we have moving forward. There's been a lot of talk of, oh, the, the saturated cards and, and talent is spread thin. Tomorrow night, Darren Elkins, a four, you know, he has a chance to fight Aldo if he wins tomorrow, being 5-0 and in the featherweight division, and he's on the undercard. And then you look at that main card, this is the way UFC cards are supposed to be. You are supposed to sit in a room with 30 fans, 30 media, 30 fighters, and they should all get hyped for the card, like the Njukawani brothers, like whoever. This is a big card, as it should be, and as all should be going forward. Yeah. No, and, hopefully and I, no more Sean McCorkles and, well, um, I like, oh yeah, whatever. You know what else I like, though? Stephen Stroop, not right. I, 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 I dig the fact that you got six, you know, we talked about six of the top, you know, the welterweights in the world. But it is a welterweight card. Yeah. UFC did it last spring with a, a heavyweight card. Now you get, with, especially, so if you know if Johnny Hendricks wins tomorrow, GSP wins tomorrow. They should be ready to go. Same exact time. Yep. We should be able to see them fight. And then right after that, you add to the card. Get get the winner between uh, Condit and or no, I, I tell you, I think Hendricks is going to win. But get you know an Ellenberger or a Condit in so there. So you're calling, you're calling. I, I think Johnny Hendricks wins. Hendricks I do. But uh, like I said earlier, you know Hendricks is going to have to use that wrestling. I think that's what because I don't know if he's going to be able to tag Condit. Don't know if he's going to be able to land that big punch. But he uses that wrestling. That's been another problem that Condit's had. And, and see, I see the flip side of that is I see Condit is too much of a veteran, too well-rounded, and too heady, and too much of a tactician to let. And I don't want to say Johnny's a one, uh, 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 you know, uh, disciplined because fighter because he's, he's not, not one. No, no, he's not. But he does rely on that left because hand, he, which he's fallen in love with. Now, if he falls in love with that left hand tomorrow. He is in deep, deep trouble because Carlos Condit's going to know how to counter that with movement, with with lateral movement, with whatever game plan him, him and Yoda, Greg Jackson, have came up with. Uh, I got to take Condit in that one. Really? Yeah. yeah that, that was yeah. you know, and I'm and I love. Listen, John, I love you, yeah. Hendrix, but I don't. I think this is this is so far, in my opinion, this is Johnny Hendrix's biggest test to date, hands down. Definitely. And if he gets paid, I'll be shocked. And I'll tell you what, if Johnny beats Condit tomorrow, he beats GSP three months later. 
if he beats Carlos Condit, that means he can beat anyone with his style. Because Carlos is similar to George. He's going to bring him a varied game plan that he will adapt on the fly. George can do the same thing. If Johnny can adapt to that and finish him, then George is in for deep, deep trouble these next few months. Well, you heard it, folks. UFC 158. I'm stoked about tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. It is. And right now, Lion Fights here at the Hard Rock. I can't wait to get inside and watch these fights. We got to tune off. Hate to leave you people, but we got some great fights to watch. Yeah. And I suggest you people watch on Access Television, right? Dude, that went yeah, quick. Time. Let's go inside and watch fights. <laughs> See you later. Tuning off.